Tonight's A to Z of the West Country features a film which has never been seen on television before. Indeed, it's not been seen in public at all for nearly 40 years. It was recently rediscovered and given to the Film Archive of the South West in Plymouth. So wallow in a little nostalgia as John Kiddy takes us back to Callington in 1955. <laughs> Memories of war were still vivid then as a group of Callington veterans got together and made this unique record of their town. It was shown in village halls for years afterwards and proved very popular. And from the top of the ancient tower which dominates the town, we see a panoramic view over the tops of the houses, the cricket I believe we've got our films back again because um, it was in great demand around all the village halls throughout the area at the time, you know. This of course was before television really, wasn't it? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction in the town at the time? They thought it was marvellous, well, you know, to see one thing in the town. And at the time people would say, oh there I am. Or there's some Mr. So-and-so. Yeah. Humphrey Buckingham was one of the film crew. The town he filmed was far more remote than it is today. The Tamar Bridge had not yet been built. Plymouth was a world away. Callington Express. Not such a busy scene, perhaps, as you might see at Waterloo or at Paddington or any of the other great termini in our country but just as important to us. Everybody knew each other. Moved back to Callington to check it. You could go to people's houses and meet them. They got friends all your time and just, you know, happy, happy town. The other activity, the primary school, may fall down. The film follows a year in the life of Callington, but it evokes memories of any small community in those post-war, never-had-it-so-good days. Take the general election, for example. Isaac Foote, father of the Plymouth Labour MP and future party leader Michael Foote, was in town campaigning that year. Isaac Foote, one of our local great men, speaks on behalf of the Liberal candidate. Mr. Fraser Wilde, the Labour candidate. Television was a novelty confined to the better off, and here in a shop window, we catch a glimpse of the man who went on to make TV election coverage so powerful, Richard Dimbleby. Recognise the gentleman on the screen. What's all the excitement? Brigade. Film can deteriorate remarkably rapidly, which is one reason why Humphrey Buckingham decided it was high time to bring it out of the attic. It was getting very brittle and could be shown it goodness knows how many times, you know. Sprockets were getting more and one thing and another. So we thought the best thing to do was to put it down in the TSW archives, in their vaults and try to keep it up to standard. Callington has changed a lot since the film was made. The station was pulled down long ago to make way for an ironically named industrial estate. You can, though, still find places where the intervening 42 years have been kind to this corner of Cornwall. They've also been kind to the couple whose wedding was recorded that year. I'm delighted to report that Margaret and Colin Plant are fit and well and living in retirement in Buckinghamshire. But whatever happened to the bouncing babies of 1955 Callington? Are you here? Did you win the prize? Well, they make a better job of it than we have. They say if you drop a pin in the well and wish... And I wonder if this young chap's dreams did come true at Deepeth Well. If you've enjoyed what you've seen tonight, why not look in the attic and see if you've got any film tucked away there, or maybe your grandpa's got some. If you have, write to me at West Country. We might well show it. Next week is the turn of Dartmouth and Devonport. And he stopped the traffic for them, you notice. That's how important our old folks are in Gallington. Our oh, Ron's a 1950s baby, or is it 1940s? Oh, 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 oh I could, uh, actually, that reminds me, I've had a letter from, uh, from... Uh